Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Um so this gives us a set of six basic operations involving continuous parameters okay and these continuous parameters uh, are the boosts in the x y z direction and rotations in the xy plane rotation in the yz plane and rotation in the zx plane. Now, in addition to these uh, continuous operations uh, or continuous transformations, um, there are also transformations uh, to two discrete transformations, which don't depend on any continuous parameter, which also belong uh, to the group of Lorentz transformations. And one of them is called the parity transformation. So this transformation matrix looks like this. It zeroes everywhere else. So this is a transformation lambda. It's called, uh, it's given a particular symbol. It's called lambda p, or sometimes it's just denoted as p. Okay, but this belongs to that set of matrices lambda, which uh, satisfy the property that lambda transpose g lambda is g uh, and what this transformation does is it takes you from an observer who has axes x y z and it uh, transforms this to an observer who has all his axes his or her axes flipped with respect to the first observer so if this is an observer s you go to an observer s prime who has axes which look like this. Now, the interesting thing about this is this set of axes of observer S prime cannot be achieved from observer S's axis just by a rotation. So even if you make a rotation in the XY plane, you will manage to rotate the XY axis so that, uh, so if I rotate the X axis and Y axis by 180 degrees, I can align them with the axis of observer S prime. But the, the z-axis will still point in the opposite direction. And the reason for that is uh, that observer S has a right-handed coordinate system. That is, if I take the vector x hat cross the vector y hat, I would get the z-hat direction. However, for observer S prime, if I take the x vector cross the y vector, I will get uh, a, a vector which points in this direction. Okay, uh, you can uh, start by using a right hand rule where your hand is placed along the x axis and curl your fingers towards the y axis, and you'd see that your thumb on your right hand would point upwards. Uh, and uh, uh, however, if you use a left hand rule, that is, if you point your uh, left hand along the x axis and then rotate your fingers towards the y direction, you'd see your thumb points downwards towards the z, the z direction of observer S prime. So, here what we have is a left handed coordinate system. Okay, something that cannot be achieved by just a rotation. And this parity operation, okay, is a transformation that takes you from a right-handed coordinate system to this kind of left-handed coordinate system of observer S prime. And finally, there is one more discrete transformation that we can make, which is called a time reversal transformation. Uh, 
which uh, looks like this. So let's call this T minus one, 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 one. Okay, and uh, what this transformation does is it takes us from an observer S who measures time in one way. So if you have an event at t is equal to zero, a future event they label as t is equal to one second, and a past event is labeled as t is equal to minus one second. Now you switch over to an observer S prime, and this observer S prime just measures their time differently, okay? They choose to label past events by positive times and future events by negative times. Okay, this is just a choice of labeling of uh, the time coordinate by this observer s prime you could always choose to do this and you label uh, label future points with negative times past points by positive times so this transformation is called a time reversal transformation and uh, it doesn't physically mean that you're reversing time it's just that you're labeling your time coordinates uh, or observer s prime is labeling their time coordinates differently than observer s Now, uh, I'll state something without proving it. That is, uh, any element of the Lorentz group, uh, that is, any matrix lambda that satisfies, these are four by four matrices lambda, that satisfy uh, the relationship lambda transpose dot g dot lambda is uh, is g. Uh, any element of this group can be written as a combination of either a boost. Uh, rotation or parity, uh, sorry, and parity time reverse time reversal operation. Okay, that is, I can construct some matrix lambda, which let's say looks like. Uh, let me make a boost in the x-axis. Uh, sorry, let's start this way. So let's make a boost about the x-axis by a parameter beta x. Let's make a boost about the y-axis by a parameter beta y. Let's further follow this by a rotation about the z-axis or let's say again about the x-axis or in the xy plane by an angle um, theta. And let's follow this with a parity operation. Okay, so you can imagine this combination of operations, and this combination of operations again will belong to the Lorentz group. And in fact, you can generate any operation in the Lorentz group that is matrices which satisfy this property by a combination of boost rotations, the parity operation, and the time reversal operation. Uh, so rather, the, probably the correct statement here is can be written as a combination of not either, but boosts, rotations, the parity operation, and time reversal operation by a composition, uh, a composition of rather than a combination, a composition of these basic operations. Okay. Now, uh, the other interesting thing is that if you look at this defining property of this Lorentz group, the defining property of the Lorentz group is lambda transpose dot g dot lambda is equal to g. Now, if g was, uh, well, if we know what g is, g is this matrix, okay, and this 
matrix has the specular property that one of them is has a positive sign and the other three have negative signs and uh, uh this is because of the space-time metric that we just learned about from special relativity it's a metric given to us by nature okay however if uh, g were of the form plus one plus one plus one plus one Then the matrices lambda would satisfy the property that lambda transpose dot, uh, that is, if this was an identity matrix, four by four, then the matrices G would satisfy this property. Oh, sorry, the matrices lambda would satisfy this property. Or in other words, lambda transpose dot lambda would be an identity matrix. Okay, in other words, lambda uh would be four by four orthogonal matrices okay. and the group of such orthogonal matrices uh is called o4 okay four by four orthogonal matrices okay uh, this is the group of four by four orthogonal matrices however in our case uh the metric is not the identity matrix the metric is rather g okay, with a plus one and three minus signs so with the metric G lambda satisfies lambda transpose dot g dot lambda g and these look almost like these orthogonal matrices except for the fact that the metric is not the identity matrix it's rather this matrix over here and so this um, group is called O three one okay is what we uh, is the set of matrices lambda so these are uh this set of matrices lambda that satisfy this relationship so this is called the lorentz group in four dimensions or in three plus one space time dimension okay so the one is to remind you that the time comes with a different sign in the metric than the spatial uh, directions okay so the group of transformations or the group of matrices which is composed of these boosts rotations parity operation time reversal operation would satisfy this relationship uh, that group is called o31 and uh, now if you'll recall that the matrices lambda which satisfy this property we had shown that the determinant of lambda can be either plus one or minus one okay either of these possibilities is allowed but if you look at um, the matrices that we found that is boosts and rotations you can easily check that the boost matrices that we wrote down and the rotation matrices that we wrote down have determinant lambda is plus one and uh, the parity the discrete operations that we wrote down that is parity and time reversal those have determinant of lambda is minus one so a general element of the Lorentz group can be constructed by a combination of boost rotations parity and time reversal and therefore a general element of the Lorentz group can have either positive determinant or negative determinant okay but in order to generate the transformation matrices with negative determinant I need to involve either a parity or a time reversal operation.
Okay, without the parity or time reversal operations, uh, my transformations are um, uh, purely have determinant lambda is plus one. Okay, so if we take the subset of Lorentz transformations with determinant lambda equals plus one, okay, then we would get what are called proper Lorentz transformations. Or sometimes these are called special transformations. And the group is called SO31. Okay, this is a subgroup of the Lorentz group. That is, it is a subset of elements of the Lorentz group uh, which satisfy all the group properties. Okay. Um, so the operations are closed within this subgroup and all these matrices have this additional restriction that the determinant of lambda is positive. But you can see that this doesn't completely restrict you from, uh, from having parity and time reversal operations. That is, I could have a combination of parity multiplied by time reversal and this would give me a matrix like this, okay? So where I both flip uh, all my axes as well as flip my time axes. And so I flip my spatial axis as well as my time axis. So if we make one more additional re restriction, that is if we take the top corner element, okay? Um, that is, this element is denoted as lambda uh, zero, zero, top left element of uh, the matrix is lambda. And we require that lambda zero, zero is positive. One more additional constraint. Okay, this excludes time reversal operations. So such transformations for which you make this restriction are called orthochronous transformations. So if we restrict it to be both proper, uh, that is determinant of lambda is positive, and we make the restriction that the transformations are orthochronous, that is, we don't have time reversals, then we get the group subgroup of what are called proper orthochronous Lorentz transformations. And that group is denoted as SO plus 3,1. Okay, the plus tells you that the time has uh, a positive orientation. Okay, future is denoted as positive and is always positive under transformations. So this set of proper orthochron orthochronous Lorentz transformations is generated only by boosts and rotations. Okay, so combinations of boosts and rotations will give us all the elements of what is called the proper orthochronous Lorentz group. And this is a subgroup of the full Lorentz group, which has the parity and time reversal operations also. Now, something that I'd like to point out here is uh, that if we only take the subgroup of rotations, Okay, um, and uh, those transformations essentially look, let's say uh, what we'd written down earlier, look something like this. Okay, there is some kind of transformation matrix 
here. Let me just write it down. So this is a rotation in the xy plane. Uh, would look like this. So this is a rotation in uh, the xy plane by an angle theta. And uh, you can see that all these rotations do not mix the time coordinate with the spatial coordinate. So essentially, other rotations would only involve this three by three block over here. Okay. And uh, so therefore, all my rotation matrices, my 4D rotation matrices, can be written in the form where I think of lambda as some matrix which is a four by four matrix, but then I have some three by three sub matrix, which is the rotation matrices. And these rotation matrices uh, depend on the angle or axis of rotation. And uh, sorry, they depend on both the angle as well as the axis of rotation. And these matrices R satisfy the property that R transpose R, where these are three by three matrices, is the three by three identity matrix. Okay, this just comes from the fact, uh, I can stick in an identity matrix here. This just comes from the fact that G itself has an identity matrix sitting in the bottom uh, lower diagonal. Uh, lower block th uh, three by three block okay so the matrices are uh which uh if i just take these three by three matrices which satisfy this equation these satisfy the equation r transpose r is identity and these are three by three matrices so these belong to the group of what are called o3 Orthogonal three by three matrices is the rotation group in three dimensions. And again, this group also includes the parity operation. It includes the operation uh, of this, which is a flip of all my spatial axes. So if I want to remove this is the 3D parity operation. If I want to remove this parity operation, I would impose an additional restriction that my group is SO3. That is the determinant of these matrices R is plus one and not minus one. So if determinant of R is plus one, this gives me what are called proper rotations. Okay. There, there's no way to talk about orthochronous because Orthochronous refers to time, and that would refer to the Lorentz group of transformations. It has nothing to do with rotations. So proper rotations is the group SO3. And if we want to generate things like uh, mirror flips, that is, imagine an operation like this. This takes us from an observer with axis x, y, z to an axis uh, where x, uh, so this is an observer s, and then there's an observer s prime with axis x, y, z, where only the x-axis is fixed. So this is like looking at a mirror in the y-z plane, right? And then you flip your axis about this mirror. So uh, such an operation, okay, can be generated by a combination of a rotation plus the parity operation. Okay, that is you imagine first that you do a parity operation. So the parity operation brings you to x, uh, y, z. And you follow this by a rotation about the x-axis, okay, uh, by 180 degrees. And what that would do is it would bring you to x, y and your z axis would be up here okay so this would be a parity operation plus rotation about 
the x-axis or rotation in the yz plane by 180 degrees okay would uh, achieve something like this okay so this mirror flip in uh in the yz plane that is if you imagine a mirror sitting in the yz plane at x is equal to zero okay that operation can be achieved by a combination of the parity operation and a rotation operation okay and if we restrict ourselves only to pure uh, proper rotations that is without parity transformations even these mirror flips are forbidden okay because you can see that the mirror flip also uh, involves a left-handed coordinate system x cross y is not going to be z but rather it's going to be in the minus z direction so now that we have the concept of uh, the Lorentz group let's in fact consider the particular subgroup where we removed the parity and time reversal transformations so let's take uh, what is called the proper orthochronous Lorentz group, which is uh, what is called SO plus 3, 1. Uh, so it doesn't have parity and time reversal operations. And this group is made up of combinations of boosts and rotations. Now, if you'll remember, the matrices that we used to identify what this group were were these matrices lambda which uh, a particular example was uh, let's say a boost along the x-axis where the matrix lambda looked like this now what we are really interested in is the objects that this matrix acts on okay so for example we were interested in how coordinates transform that is how c t x y z as seen by one observer would be related to c t prime x prime y prime z prime as seen by another observer and uh, we said that if the observers s prime are related to the observers uh, in frame s by a boost along the z-axis or sorry along the x-axis that is you think of s prime as moving along the x-axis at a speed uh, v by c relative to the frame s then the correct transformation to use is to put in that matrix lambda over here So in this way, we can define this column vector. Uh, in shorthand, we can write this as um, a vector v. And this is a vector in a generalized sense. So this is a vector in four dimensions. Okay, so this is a four-dimensional vector. 